previously on Corpse Party. Let's finish this chapter. Really? You're Mochita's sister. Um, I swear, this place is going to drive us all batty. To think there'd be a corpse like this so close by. Hmm? You're shaking. What happened to Machida? Big Brother's gone away somewhere. You poor thing. Come with me. I'll help you find him. No. Uh, I'll be okay. I'll search for him. By myself. Oh, dude, what are you doing? Oh my god! Hey, it's that girl! Her eyes have a hollow appearance to them, yet still retain a tiny echo of life and reflect a palpable sense of terror. It almost seems as if she could have snapped out of it at any moment. Stand up and walk away. The corpse is so fresh. Simply being in its presence, it's disquieting. Oh, you, hey, dude. Did you fucking kill this girl? What's your problem? You know, fine, I'll just talk to you, see? Huh? Why are you running? I have to hide. Where the hell do we hide? Bathroom? <sighs> Big brother, I'm scared. Oh, mother of God, I made a mistake. Shit. Ah, oh, fuck. Must be nighttime. I must have woken up in the middle of the night again. Probably drank too much juice before bed. <laughs> Since I'm up anyway, I guess I'll go wake Big Brother and bug him a little before I go back to sleep. The hell's that sound? Maybe drink a nice big glass of peach juice, too. Yeah, that sounds good. What? Get back! Ah! The spirit of a little girl appears right in front of Yuka's face, glowing a bluish white. The left eye should be. Only a gaping, empty socket can be seen. The squiding snip, snip, sound grows ever louder as the spirit draws nearer and presents the item she holds in her hand. It's a pair of sewing scissors, and she's brandishing them dangerously close to Yuka's face. The inner blades are dull, rusty, and caked with blood. There's little doubt that the following events are going to be unimaginably excruciating. No, please, no! Get back. Hit me back my eye! The girl repeats her futile command, over and over again, bringing the blades closer and closer and closer each time. I can't move. Big brother. Give it to me! No, no! Alright, we're not going in the bathroom because that fucking killed us. I feel like I'm going to burst. What the fuck do we do? We can't go that way, so let's just...
Really? What the fuck do we do? <sighs> oh! Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Big Brother, you lied. You lied to me. You said you wouldn't leave me by my Are you... injured? That's not my big brother. I'm so sorry. I'm... My name is Yuka Muchida. Mine's Yuya Kizami. I'm an 11th grader at Byakarun Senior High. Yuka, was it? Were you also spirited away here? After performing the forbidden Sachiko charm? Uh... I don't know. I see. Given that you called me Big Brother a moment ago, I assume he's coming here with you. Big Brother. Big Brother. You poor girl. I've also become separated from my little sister, and am presently searching for her. Your little sister is in here? She is. If you'd like, you may accompany me. We'll look for your big brother along the way. In a place like this, after all, the living should stick together as much as possible. My poor sister is probably off somewhere crying right now. Just as you are. I simply must find her. So what do you say? Will you join the hunt? Yes, please. Help me find my big brother. I will. Fear not. I'm certain we'll cross his path. Oh, cool. New character. Can we go fight that ghost with you? Wow. We can. Right, but first, you're big. Well, we're not getting through with this in our way, so. Whoa. Are you all right? This is terrible. Yuka, have you seen the ghosts of the children? Y yeah. I have. I've been reading the school flyers and dying messages scattered throughout this school. And it seems the ghost of the man who killed those children is in here somewhere as well. He's apparently quite large and wields a hammer. You'd best be on your guard. I've had a great many of my friends. Many, many, many people killed by that man and those wretched children. At any rate, it seems clear we should stick together, as there's simply no telling what may happen if we part ways. Come, you must find my sister and your brother before it's too late. Big brother, I sure hope you're all right. Cabinet time. That was unexpected. These are the remains of a female student who clearly suffered a blow to the head. Her skull is cracked open and there's dried blood everywhere. Her broken glasses, as well as a student ID name tag, are resting next to her mangled corpse. Emi Urabe. This is recent. A few sentences scribbled on the surface of the desk. Kaori, be very careful around the green goo splattered all over the floor. It can kill you. I ran into a spiritualist here, who left behind a pair of shoes blessed with holy water. If one person wears them, and all in attendance join hands, then, and only then, 
Is it safe to traverse the accursed green goo? Whenever I see the sorrowful bodies of those who died here, I feel as if I may go mad with worry. I beg of you, survive these ordeals. Live! A pair of shoes of the faint, nearly imperceptible bluish glow catches your eye from under the desk. Take them? Hell yeah! Dude, I've been walking around so fucking long. Let's get the hell out of here. Magic shoes, baby. What seems to be the problem, Yuka? I, uh, really have to go to the bathroom. Oh, don't tell me you've been holding it in all this time. Have you? Uh-huh. I, uh... My, my. Well... We'd best find you a place to relieve yourself, then. Though I seem to recall our options being rather limited. I am gonna lose my fucking mind. I've been walking around for so long, it's... Ugh. Yeah. In its hand is a school printout with some text written on the back in felt-tipped pen. Daddy. I want to go back to Higansu. Kanano Sachimura. There is... There are even elementary schoolers here? What a wretched fate. How on earth did she get caught up in this mess? Hey, look! The crystal of unsealing shattered. That's where I needed to go. The protective charms attached to the door have completely vanished. It's now opening with no difficulty whatsoever. Seems usable now. Will you be alright by yourself? Uh-huh. I'll be okay. Get to it, then. I'll be waiting right here for you. Thanks. Kizami? Kizami, is it really you? Kurosaki, you're alive! You too? Man, are you a sight for sore eyes? Finally, someone else who isn't dead. Godforsaken place that this is. I was at my wit's end just now. Let me tell you, outside of this school, there's nothing but trees. As far as the eye can see. I thought about braving the wilderness, but it seems like one of those Forest of the Lost you see in video games. Once you enter, you can never leave. So what the hell is this place anyway? Damn it all. There are actual honest-to-goodness ghosts in here, you know? I think we may be stuck here for good. There's no way out. For any of us. Did you see? Mitsuki. In the next room. She's... Dead. Yeah. I saw. I just don't know how to handle this. I... I feel like there's a certain number. A certain number of dead bodies a person's expected to see within his lifetime. And I swear, in the last hour alone, I think I've far surpassed my quota. <sighs> Just yesterday, Mitsuki dumped her boyfriend after finding out he was cheating on her with three other women. She's been really down about it all morning. So I sent her stupid text messages during class to cheer her up. She seemed mad about it during study hall. But then she sent me a thank you message the very next period. I think I was actually able to lift her spirits a little. Now, though, she's gone. Killed by actual spirits. I guess it was those children. Huh? What? Huh? Oh my god. Kizami? What are you doing? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Whoa. Kizami. Within these walls, it doesn't matter if you're killed by them or killed by me. Either way, you're dead. Where? What the? What happened? Where am I? Was I knocked out? Yuka! Yuka, are you there? Heavenly Host Elementary School Closure Day, 1975. 11, 18. There's a plaque inside the case commemorating the school's establishment. It's covered in bloody handprints as if someone were frantically caressing it. It's haphazardly crammed to bursting with crumpled up documents, newspaper clippings, and scrap paper. School scandals continue. Principal question and liability. A cursed school? The many grisly happenings at Heavenly Host. School nurse reported missing. I'm not reading that. There's a blood-stained cassette on the floor. It seems to be from a digital video camera. Pick it up. Yes. QBQ research data, huh? Heavenly Host Bulletin. An individual unaffiliated with the school broke into the building last night and killed himself. This is the third such incident. The deceased was a 72-year-old single male from a neighboring prefecture. Strange but true stories of the occult chasing down the hidden past of the cursed school building. It really exists. By Ko Kibiki. Give it a look. Yeah, why not? Wait, I haven't saved. Ah, uh, fuck it. Over the course of several days, a series of incidents occurred within this town in which young children disappeared one after another. Their whereabouts were ultimately discovered through a thorough police investigation. But said findings were very much a worst-case scenario. Three of the missing children were found dead in a concealed room beneath Heavenly Host Elementary. Officially, unused throughout the school's history, the fourth missing child was thankfully still alive, quaking in fear on the ground, presumably only moments away from demise when police arrived. Capping off this nightmarish scene was an adult member of the school's teaching staff, who seemed to be in a state of confusion. In his hands were a pair of bloodied scissors. 1973, 9-18. The surviving elementary school student, after psychological counseling, gave official testimony fingering the scissor man as abductor and murderer. The staff member in question was officially charged with multiple counts of abduction and murder of minors, as well as desecration of the dead. He was quickly taken to trial, where an insanity plea spared him from prison or death, but resulted in his compulsory admittance to a mental hospital. Interestingly, the perpetrator of these crimes was none other than the school principal's own son, who was widely renowned for his jovial personality. However, due to an ailment of unknown origin, he began losing his ability to speak, little by little during his years teaching at Heavenly Host. Once his speech was all but gone, he began searching for alternate places of employment, which occupied him for several months prior to the crime. The results of this endeavor were not favorable, however, and most of his days were spent staggering idly through the streets. His reputation quickly degraded. Several months after his admittance to the mental hospital, he managed to slip past the many nurses on duty and escape the premises. Immediately upon doing so, he made his way into the concealed basement room at Heavenly Host Elementary, where he took his own life by hanging. 
The three children he had killed were all Heavenly Host Elementary students. But the one girl who was rescued from the gaping gnaw of eternal slumber was not. Following her close call, she and her family moved to another prefecture, far from the memories that no doubt would have otherwise haunted them forever. Sadly, this was only the beginning of the misfortune that would hereafter plague this school, which had already earned itself many an unsettling rumor. Over the next few years, Heavenly Host would become a stage for countless incidences of rape, molestation, and suicide, with student registration and attendance dwindling at an alarming rate in response to these crimes, this school was eventually shut down. The 60-year-old principal at the time had become infamous as an eccentric who adorned his walls, doors, and furniture with incomprehensible graffiti. Even later, forensic analysis of the writings throughout his office could make little sense of his haphazardly scribbled enumerations. In the day after the school's closure day was finalized, this aged eccentric threw himself from its roof. He broke his neck on impact, dying instantly. As you can clearly discern, the sordid history of this school is indeed awful. But there may be more to it than merely a series of unfortunate incidents. A power greater than any of us can comprehend may be acting as puppeteer from the shadows, maintaining an actual, tangible curse upon this property. And the key to it all lies with the sole survivor, the girl who bore witness to the brutal murders and mutilations of three children, no older than she, the girl in the red dress, the one who got away. My investigation into the supernatural side of this horrific massacre is only just the beginning. Rest assured, I intend to make this a regular feature. I've begun gathering data for a follow-up report, so stay tuned. The next issue promises to uncover more details in this morbidly fascinating story. According to this article, one girl survived the murders. But if this photograph is correct, then it's that same girl in the red dress we saw earlier. Why would someone who wasn't killed here be haunting the school? Damn. Looks like I'm locked in. To worry so much for another's well-being that it torments you to the core. It's an exquisite stigmata that afflicts the living and the dead alike. Uh, and you are? Huh. Her eyes are so cloudy. Like a dead fish. I'm the spirit of a girl who died here. Okay. I'm really not sure how to respond to that. Happiness and unhappiness are linked. Whenever one attempts to gain good fortune with little effort, there is always a risk. What are you trying to say? You and your friends have become trapped in this school because you performed the Sachiko Ever After charm and messed it up. Sachiko? You mean that paper doll thing we all did? How did we mess it up? One of you chanted the phrase too many times, or too few. The number of participants determines the number of repetitions that must be spoken. And somebody goofed. Everybody said it nine times? Sachiko, so we beg of you. Nine times! You have to say it one time for every person present. No more, no less. Or the charm will fail. I'm pretty sure it wasn't me. I remember saying it nine times. So did someone else mess up? And is that why... No. No, I'm not gonna start placing blame. This wasn't anyone's fault. It may have been on purpose. One of your friends probably thought the whole thing was silly, and just didn't even bother to count. Or maybe a misguided member of your group didn't want the fun to end, and knowingly flubbed the charm in a vain attempt at prompting a do-over. No! Even if it wasn't on purpose, some of your friends have a tendency not to take things very seriously, no? It's not inconceivable that they'd mess up, and just say, Oh well, it's not like I'll ever be found out, without even realizing that their actions would ultimately damn you all. <laughs> no one's owned up to it, right? 
Not a single one of your friends has said to you. I screwed up. I'm so very sorry. Shut the hell up already. <laughs> My apologies. I've proposed far too many likely scenarios, it seems. Perhaps it's the nature of my job. I have long since abandoned my writings, after all. You do still have your scrap of paper doll, no? Be sure you hang on to that, and hang on tight. Treat it like a memento. A memento of those who are dear to you. Um, sorry to cut this short, but I'm in a bit of a hurry here. They seem to have gotten separated from my little sister. And there are still some other people I need to find, too. Such concern for your friends, and all the impulses that go with it. Spurring the heart into action. It's a truly noble sentiment. That's all charms really are, you know. They represent one's regards for other people. They're like microcosms of the soul. Whether it be love or hate, all you need is a truly strong emotion to set them off. The stronger it is, the more powerful the charm. Splend. Man's hook. I'm burning up. Wait, hold on. What are you? Freaky, Tsui ball. It feels like my body's on fire. Stop this, please stop. Ball, Tsui, frigid hook. Man's splend. We will not allow anyone to stand in our way. Those who do will suffer without mercy. Now go. Go to the one who occupies your thoughts. Though you probably won't make it in time. <laughs>